All right, guys, welcome back to the channel for this episode. We have something super cool. This is the SPC 90. It's a 90 millimeter indoor or outdoor quad, and you can also get it with a variety of different receivers on board. I have the, the uh, FR Sky receiver on mine for my Tyrannus Plus, but you can also get it for DSMX, or you can also get it for Fly Sky. So guys with the i6, you're good to go. You can bind this one to your i6. Now, what I like the most about this quadcopter, and I'm gonna go right into this, uh, 10 millimeter motors on here. 10 millimeter, by the way, guys, rocks outdoors. So tiny whoop outdoors with acro and clean flight on here. Definitely a good winning combo. Uh, 600 TVL camera on here, so it's pretty top notch camera. And you get two sets of props in this cool little t steel tin that comes along with it. Uh, I'll go ahead and open that up and show you the contents of that. It's nice that they include a little case for it. You also get a little ST, this is a little uh, JST connector here. That's a converter from the original cable that comes along with your battery. You get a 500 milliamp 1S battery on there. It gives you about five minutes flight time. That's what I like the most about these because that's about double the flight time of these little tiny whoop copters. You also get some extra zip ties in here in case you decide to put on a different micro receiver later. You can go back and add zip ties if you need to. Uh, here's your extra props that come with it. And what else is in the box here? Some extra foam pads here. Oh no, these are little uh, heat shrinks for around the motor. So if you have to take these motors off, you have extra two extra heat shrink pieces here. That's pretty cool because the brushed motors do go out from time to time. And also hiding down in the bottom of this tin is a little prop remover tool. Nice to use these so you don't damage the uh, shafts on these motors. They're very easy to damage those shafts on those little tiny motors. Uh, I was flying it earlier indoors and I've flown quads a lot like this outdoors and they absolutely rock outdoors, man. Uh, they just, they're so cool. The only limited thing about them is probably the range. You're gonna get around a football field uh, away with these before you drop out of the air. I have mine set to land on this one, mainly because in clean flight, you can set it to that minimum throttle and it's pretty safe to do that. Uh, it's not likely that it's going to fly away, but uh, have yours set to land and it'll kind of come down to a gentle landing instead of dropping out of the air. Some of these super small micros, sometimes I do that. Bigger quads, race quads, I always have it uh, drop out of the air because I do not want a chance to fly away. Um, and that's just me. A little extra bit of safety is great. Now, one thing I want to mention, if you get yours um, and you have a problem with one of your motors. These motors are plug and play. So as you can see from the side here, I'm just gonna point at this with a little pointer tool. If you look from the side, you can see a little connector point in here. And these motors plug in to these. This is really nice. Now if you get a bad motor and one of your motors doesn't spool up after I show you how to set it up in clean flight, once you arm, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna pop the top on here and you're gonna snip this little connector off. I know that sounds crazy, um, but if it's a bad solder joint underneath this connector, it's going to be almost impossible for you to fix that. Now, if you're handy with a soldering iron, you can flip this board over and heat up the, the pads on the other side of this and reseat it or add a little more solder on both the positive and negative connection there. Now, that's only if one of your motors don't spool up. One of mine didn't, so I had that issue. So what I did was the connection wasn't very good. Um, for that connector so I just removed it and directly soldered the wires positive and negative straight to the board so no big deal uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll remove this battery here and I'll show you the top of the quad I already have the props on here because uh, I've already been flying it around the workshop here I think it flies really locked in on these stock pids the stock pids on this are super nice uh, you're gonna get this working on your fat shark antenna uh, on 5.8, it's gonna be fine on those Fat Shark goggles, any of the series of Fat Shark goggles that you have a 5.8 module for. Uh, also, it's gonna work on the larger, kind of box style, um, like head play goggles. So you can use this on a variety of different goggles, or you can fly with a monitor if you want to, as long as it's 5.8. So I'll go ahead and pop the top real quick for you, and I'll show you this, uh, the way this looks inside here. It's kind of cool how they have the antenna for the 5.8 coming out the back. I've also got a micro receiver in here for my FR Sky transmitter. 
and that little antenna is also hanging out the back. They're kind of close together, which is kind of concerning, but I can always move that down and out of the way a little bit there. See the little black antenna here coming down? Right there. That is the receiver antenna. I'm wondering how that's going to work when it's uh, facing away from me, but if I have it down enough, I believe I'll get enough signal. Okay. And guys, if you're new to this, you can pick up some VHB to help things stick a little better on these frames. I always tell guys about that on my channel. It's like the best hobby grade sticky double sided sticky tape you can get. You can check that out on Amazon. I don't get any kickbacks from telling you that. It's just totally to help you guys out. And that's if you're sticking down like your receiver inside here. Uh, you can put that in between the board, this receiver and the flight board. It's uh, pretty nice stuff. So now you're looking at the top of the quad and we see this, how this antenna is horizontal mounted, which is super cool because a lot of times they come up this way and this one's going to probably last you longer. It's not going to be quite as susceptible to crashes coming out the back like that. Now video range, when you're flying away from yourself, if you're directly in front of yourself, the signal comes out like a donut around it. So if you're directly in front of yourself, you might not get as good a signal coming straight behind it because there is a hole back here somewhere uh, directly above this antenna. So keep that in mind when you're flying around um, and you start to get a little fuzziness, that might be why it might be pointed straight at you. Um, so now from the very front, uh, from the very top, you can see that FR Sky receiver in here and you're going to want to bind this using this little tiny bind button right here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you're going to hold that down and you're going to select bind in your Tyrannus. I have it on D8 and that worked fine to bind it up. It is, I believe, an S-Bus receiver. It's set up in S-Bus inside Clean Flight. Uh, and then the power connector is kind of strange back here. I haven't seen this one before on this quad, these types of quads yet. Usually it's just like a little JST or a little hub sand style micro connector that kind of hangs off by a wire. But this one's mounted straight to the board. So you can actually take your battery from this this battery and plug it straight into the board right there like that. You don't have to use this little converter. But this is nice because you can use this to plug this into your battery and charge it on your standalone charger. Um, this one doesn't come with a charger, by the way. So if you already guys that already have a charger and you have a JST lead coming off your charger, boom, charge it up right there. Uh, pretty cool. And that's a little SP Maker 501S 25C battery. So let's go ahead, let's hook it up to Clean Flight for you. And I'm gonna show you some tips on how to set this one up and uh, set up your modes on here and all that good stuff. Also, some important information on about how to get your motors working uh, and armed. Because these motors, they have to go, uh, they have to be, they have to have the, the PWM rate has to be set in the CLI before these will start to work. So I'll show you that now. Okay guys, so I'm gonna help you set up your SPC90 inside Clean Flight. Go ahead and plug in your USB cable there and open up Clean Flight, press connect, and go in. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check out your orientations, make, make sure left is left and right is right, back and forward, and that should be all good there. As long as you have your props on correctly, you should be able to take off once you get your motors armed. Um, this back right one is gonna be a right turn prop, Front is going to be a left turn. This will be motor number two. Motor number three is going to be left turn as well. Directly across and directly across in the rear is also going to be a right turn prop in the very front. Uh, so that's the way your props go on. Now let's go ahead and look at the ports. And the ports USB, uh, USB VCP is set to on. UART1 is set to on. And we have UART2 is selected on serial RX. And I'll show you that with the FR Sky receiver in just a minute. Now on motor stop, that's fine. Disarm the motors. Yep, minimum throttle is at 1100. Max is at 1800. You go ahead and set your values there if those aren't set. Uh, you can back that minimum throttle down to 1150, but I'm just gonna leave that on 1100. Now, board and sensor alignment, all zeroed out there for roll, pitch, and yaw. That's good. BVAT can be on. Current meter, RSSI is all good. 
telemetry you can leave on. It had black box checked on and transponder. I turned those both off because I'm not going to use those. Once you make a change on any screen, go ahead and save and reboot and go back into the software and go ahead and connect again. Now we'll go down to PID tuning and I put mine on 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65 for the rates. And that's going to give it a little faster flip. Uh, if you go up anymore, like 75, 85, it's going to start to get really tight on your rolls. And I like this one to roll tight. These are, these are kind of nice outdoors. They fly a lot like the big quads. They don't catch themselves quite as, as much though uh, after a roll. So you kind of got to throttle up a lot in a, when you do a roll. Now let's go ahead and plug in the battery and I'll show you the receiver setup here. I turn on the train. Welcome to open TX. And now we'll plug in the battery here. Battery is a little hard to get. Battery plug is a little bit hard to get to because the uh, antenna is back there. But go ahead and plug in your battery. And now you should see your channel maps moving. So we're going to check the throttle. If you go up with your throttle, like I'm doing here, you should see your values go up. And when you push down, you should see them go down. Now let's check the roll axis. You should see your roll go to the left just like that and to the right like that. Okay, when let's check the, the pitch. If we go forward, the num number should go up and backwards, the number should go down. Okay, and we're gonna check the arm switch. I already have my motor PWM rate set, so you'll see the motors spool up, possibly. Okay, auxiliary three, right there. Now that's my arm switch. Now we should have auxiliary two will be my mode switch. So that's good there. Now let's go down to the modes menu and this is the way I have it set up. Mine's on auxiliary three and that's my arm switch there. You'll see that little green dot right here move when I move the arm switch. Okay, now angle mode I have set up to auxiliary two. That's my three position switch one horizon right here and just go ahead and move these sliders. You can move these sliders back and forth. Move them in kind of tight where you're going to be in that mode. Now for air mode down at the very bottom also on aux 2. Third on. position down for me and I have that set up. So now press save whenever you're done with these settings. And look at what I have here and, and do yours the same way if you want. Now we go down to uh, the motors setup and you can test your motors and I suggest doing this with the props off so you don't have a real blunder on the bench. Now my all my motors spooled up right there. You can check them one at a time by going one, two, three, and four to make sure they're turning the right direction. Now never do that with a big quad on the bench with uh, five inch props or three inch props on the bench. I'll go ahead and type in version because I'm interested to see what version's on here. So we have June 6, it's not bad, SP Racing F3 Evo, that's an Evo brush board. So now I'll type in the parameters that you're going to enter to get your motors to arm. And that is going to be set just like this, set space motor underscore PWM underscore rate space equal sign space 32,000. Once you type that in and hit return, go ahead and type in save again and hit return again. And now your motors will spool up once you hit your arm switch. So very important, this quad's not gonna spool up at all until you do that. Uh, but everything looks good to go in here and I'm able to go outside and fly now. So this should help you out with your SPC 90. I hope uh, this video helps you out. So. Happy flying, you guys. Fly safe, fly fast, and be careful. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one. New for 2017, we've completely redesigned DroneCamps.com for the YouTube channel and for our users. So you can go there now. There's a community forum. You can leave a message. You can ask other people things about stuff you saw in the video and hope for a reply from the community or myself. You can also go back in our catalog and you can look at previous videos that have already been posted on the YouTube channel. So there's a ton of information on this site. Also for businesses, we've added this need a review contact us page. Also, you can send me a message personally and I can look at your product for review. FAA information on here also for you guys to register your drones so tons of cool information on the new website check it out